Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Affinity Photo. In this video, we're going to create an HDR image from three individual RAW files. As you can see, I have Affinity Photo open, so we need to load those RAW files. To do that, go up to File, then down to New HDR Merge. Click there, and the New HDR Merge dialog box will appear, and we need to add those files. So we'll click on Add. And when you do, if you have a Mac, Mac Finder will open up. If you have a Windows computer, Windows File Explorer will open up. Just navigate to wherever the images are on your computer. I happen to have them on my desktop inside of this Affinity HDR folder. And I mentioned that I have three RAW files. They happen to be Nikon RAW files. And it doesn't matter how many you have, meaning you could have more than three. You could have five, seven, nine. I happen to use three. This is um, a bracket of a church and I bracketed the images one stop apart. It also doesn't matter how far apart your bracket is in exposure, meaning you could do two stops, three stops, whatever works for you, your scene, your situation. This church didn't have a lot of dynamic range in it, and the exposure latitude of my camera could handle it pretty well. did have stained glass windows, so that's why I wanted to do the bracket, and I used the three image bracket, one stop apart. Now we need to select all three of them. So I'm going to click on one and hold the command key in and click on the other two. Um, if you have a PC, of course, hold the control key in instead of a command key. Click open. Now you'll see they're listed here, but there's this little black postage stamp view of the image. It's still loading when you see that. And you really won't be able to do anything until you kind of see that little postage stamp view turn into the actual individual images. And depending on the speed of your computer, it may take a second. And there they are. There's the three images. Now we have some controls here. First of all, the first checkbox is automatically align images. I did not use a tripod, so I need these images automatically aligned. If you used a tripod and you're positively, positively sure that the tripod didn't move at all, the camera didn't move, then you could uncheck this box and your merge will go a little faster. It doesn't hurt to keep it checked even if you use a tripod. Now I'm going to check it because obviously I said I didn't use a tripod. And then there's two different ways it will align the images. Uh, one is perspective and I found that that works perfectly every single time. The other is scale, rotate, translate. Um, I just as an experiment tried that once and it worked. So, but as I mentioned, perspective worked every single time. What I suggest is use perspective. If for some reason it didn't work, then try it over, do it over, and try scale, rotate, and translate. Below that is automatically remove ghosts. If you have something in the image that is moving between the three or five or whatever, how many shots you took, then you should check this box. Um, in this case, nothing was in the church except me. So there was nothing moving. Uh, if it was taken outside and it was a little breezy out and the trees were moving or there were grasses moving, I would check that box. If someone was in the church and they were w walking across or something the front of where I was shooting, then I would check that box as well. Now below that is noise reduction. Now this, only check this box if you're loading in raw files. That's what it's meant for. If you're loading anything except a RAW file, meaning a JPEG or a TIFF or something else, then it, they recommend that you do not check this box, that you reduce noise after you're done doing the merge with one of the other um, functions that are available in Affinity Photo for noise reduction. So because these are RAW files, I have this box checked, and by default it's going to show 40%. There wasn't a lot of noise in these images, and I'll leave it at 40%. If you have an image that is really, really noisy, or a bracket that is really noisy, you may want to push this up. If you have some that aren't noisy at all, just pull it down. Again, though, this is only applicable, they recommend, for, um, for RAW files. Below that, it says Tone Map HDR Image. If this is checked, after it creates the HDR, 
it's going to open up into the tone mapping persona. If it isn't checked, it will just open up into the photo persona. I recommend that you keep this checked and open up in the tone map persona because as you'll see, there's some functionality there to help you further process your tone mapped image exactly like you'd like it. Once you're done there and you click apply, then the image opens up in the photo persona and you could further process the image. So keep that checked. So I'm ready to go. I'm going to click OK. Now, what Affinity Photo does, uh, first of all, when you click OK, it's going to act like it's not doing anything. Just wait a second and then at the top, you'll see a progress bar come along and it's going to tell you what stage of the process it's in in creating this merged HDR image. What Affinity Photo does is creates, it creates a 32-bit unbounded HDR image. And what that means is there's, there's going to be so much tonal range in this 32-bit image that it may not display, but all that info will be stored in the file. So that's what unbounded means. So it is a really very powerful um, HDR functionality in Affinity Photo rivals that of the 32-bit option in Photoshop. Um, so, you know, it's, it's uh, I actually, as far as I'm concerned, my personal opinion, it's probably my favorite um, HDR processor, if that makes any sense. My HDR program, I really do like the work, the way it works. Now, I mentioned that once it's done, and it is going to take a minute or two, it will open up in this, the um, tone mapping persona or the tone map persona. And you could further process it here. Now you can see on the progress bar, it's doing denoise to the image. So it's uh, eliminating noise. And on the left-hand side, there's a few presets um, for the tone mapping you could choose from. And then on the right-hand side are the actual tone map controls that are available to you. Um, personally, I like to take a preset that I think is kind of close to what I like and then go over on the right hand side and readjust the sliders to make the image uh, exactly like I like it. Then when I'm done, you would click apply and it opens up, as I mentioned in the photo persona. And as far as this image is concerned, it's, it's pretty crooked. So I'm going to have to straighten it. Um, so I'll do that in the photo persona. So now we're done. And by default, it's going to go to this very first preset that's called natural. And you can look, there's detailed. And I, I really do like detailed. There's cool. I don't care for cool that much. High contrast black and white. That's interesting. And dramatic, I've never ever liked in any image I've ever done. So I don't care for that. I do like detailed. Now, um, there are some other categories here. Extreme. And you could go through all these if you'd like. Um, nothing I ever like in extreme. Definitely nothing I like in crazy. So I won't even go there. And then there's um, custom presets by a photographer named jo James Ritson. You could click on that. And you could see red shade, crime, whatever. So I'm just going to go back to the default. And I'm going to go to detailed. Because that's kind of close to what I like. Now, go over to the right-hand side, and we have the actual controls. And the main one for the tone mapping are these two uh, sliders, tone compression. Um, the more you move it to the right, the more HDR look it will give it, and local contrast as well. So I'm going to turn local contrast up a little bit. Now, if you go in here and you start moving things around and you, you screw it up, just click on that preset again and it will get you back to ground zero in this case detailed so i'm going to leave tone compression where it is at 100 and i'm going to move local contrast up just a little bit more and this church was very bright but this rendition of it is a little bit too bright it wasn't quite like this so i'm going to bring exposure down a little bit and I'm going to go to the enhance sliders and I'm going to bring saturation up a little bit. 
And then uh, I think I'll jump right down to shadows and highlights. And I want to bring shadows down. It's not going to do much, but it will give me a little more, um, a little more darker area in the pews. And I like that. You know, let's see what um, highlights. I don't like the highlight slider being moved anywhere but where it was. So I'm just going to double click on it and reset it back to its default zero position. So we'll leave it there. Uh, curves, I'm not going to do anything with that. So I'd say that this is pretty much like I, I like it. Now, as I mentioned, it is crooked. I got to fix that. And I'll fix that in the photo persona. And to get over to the photo persona, we're going to go up here in the top left hand corner and click apply. Now it's going to tone map the image. You can see the progress bar at the top. So it will just take a second. Once it's done, then I could open up the crop tool and I'm just going to crop it by eye. I'm going to just go outside the bounds of the image and you'll see I'll get this double arrow and I'll click with the left mouse button and I'll drag the mouse up and down to straighten it. And what I'm looking at, because we have this tight grid now, I'm going to look at these lines and make them parallel to those window lines that are in the distance there. I think that that will kind of indicate to me that it's pretty straight. So I'll go with that. I like that. Now another thing um, you'll see is that because it was auto aligned, I didn't use a tripod and obviously I moved between each of these shots. There's some blank pixels up here at the top left hand corner, the right hand side, the bottom uh, right hand corner and the left hand side at the bottom. So I need to get rid of those. Now I'm going to go to the mode. I like to keep the original ratio. If I left it at unconstrained, then I would be able to just move these handles and make the image um, any ratio I want. I prefer to keep the original three to two ratio. So what we're going to do is make sure that's on original ratio and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to pull this one down and I'm going to push this one up and I got rid of all the blank pixels. What I want though, you can see right here is the center of my crop box, this handle here. I'd like that to go right along this uh, roof line or ceiling line. So I'm going to move the image or move the whole crop box that way. So that's right in the middle and make sure that I didn't reintroduce any blank pixels. And once I'm satisfied with that, I'll go up here in this top left hand apply. And you can see there it is. Now I'm not super happy with the image per se, not because of the way Affinity Photo did the um, HDR merge, but I shot it very poorly. Um, I just don't like the lines. I it was a little crooked on the bottom here. And, um, so but it's, it gets the point across on how to use the HDR merge feature in Affinity Photo. Now I mentioned this is a 32-bit unbounded image. We need to save it. Um, so to do that, we'll go up to File and then go down to Save As. And when you do that, uh, this dialog box, of course, will pop up and we could save it and give it a name. So I'm going to just call it my, uh, whoops, my HDR. Okay just for lack of a better name. And I'm going to save it right into that same Affinity HDR folder. Now this image is a proprietary Affinity Photo um, uh, file. You can see it says AF Photo. So you're going to have to only open this up in Affinity Photo. To, in order to share this on social media or maybe to print it on your printer or something like that, we're going to have to export it or send it to a lab to be printed more, more accurately. We're going to have to export, and we'll do that in a minute. So we're going to save this as this propri proprietary Affinity Photo image. And we'll click Save, and it's going to take a second. This is going to be a very large file because it is, again, I mentioned, um, it's a 32-bit unbounded file. So it's going to be relatively big, and you can see the progress bar at the, stop, at the top. Save Document As, and it's going across relatively slowly. And once it's done, then we'll export it. And we'll export it as a JPEG, let's say. And we're going to maybe share this JPEG somewhere that requires a specific size. So we're done there. So now we're going to export it. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Export. And I mentioned we're going to do a JPEG. Now this is a very large uh, image. It was shot with either, I think this was an Nikon D850. 
So you can see it's a very large file. I don't want to save it that large. Um, I'm going to save it to some social media somewhere. So I'm going to do, let's say, 2048 on the long side. And because that padlock is locked in the middle, once I tab out of this field, the um, vertical size will automatically resize so it's keeping the same 3 to 2 ratio. Now I want to use the JPEG best quality preset, which includes a bilinear uh, resampling, uh, quality at 100. Doesn't, you, know, you could go down to about 80 on that, actually, and you probably won't see any difference. Um, areas, the whole document, and I'm just not going to check that. Um, you know, hidden export persona, nothing applicable here. I like what I got, so I'm going to click export. And when it does, uh, it'll come up with this box again, and I named the original file now my HDR, but this one's going to be a JPEG, and I'm going to save it in that same spot. So we'll save it right there. And now once we saved the proprietary Affinity Photo file, I actually could close this down. It won't prompt me to save it. So I'm just going to hit Command Q because of my Mac. I could do that to close that. Closed everything down. Now I could go to this Affinity Photo um, folder and there's my JPEG. You can see that's 3.9 megabytes, whereas that proprietary file is 570.8 megabytes. So that's a pretty big file. Um, but I could click, there's my JPEG. And now if I double click on this one, it's going to open up in Affinity Photo. And you can see I just double clicked on it and Affinity Photo is opening and it's going to open. There it is, close there. So that proprietary, proprietary file will automatically open in Affinity Photo. So you could come in here and do some more work on this if you'd like. And that's really how you do it, how you would process an image, uh, multiple images into a merged HDR. And uh, my example, again, I used three images and they were one stop apart. You could use more than three. You could use two. You could, um, you know, you could, meaning less than three, you could uh, have them uh, more than one stop apart. Maybe you, you take um, bracketed images two stops apart or three stops apart. It doesn't matter. Affinity Photo could handle it. So it's very simple, very powerful tool in Affinity Photo. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.